Hey, this is Time Bomb, and if it's your first time checking out the channel, hit that subscribe button to catch all the updates. Thanks a lot for joining me today. I just wanted to do a breakdown on my 4-3 Tampa 2 defense that I've been using. Did I say Tampa 3? Tampa 2 defense. I can't believe I just said Tampa 3. So, um, 4 offense... Just gonna use a, yeah, we'll just use a random play on offense against us. So, um, I've got basically two setups for this 4-3. Um, just this Tampa 2, I like to use it out of the 4-3 wide 9. First thing I do is I base a line, then I'm gonna pinch the line, and really all you're gonna do is double tap RB and put Y into a deep blue. And then I like to use her, this middle linebacker right here. And you can spread out the middle linebackers as well, maybe drop Keekly back if he's your deep blue a little bit. And then you're just going to play over the middle here and to the left as need be. Um, if you want, because you're in a 4-3, you could put, you know, uh, you could put, sorry, X into a hook over there. So then he's watching that side of the field and you just have to watch the middle. It gives you obviously less pass rushing. So maybe that's not what you want to do, but sometimes I'll do it. Let's take a look at this play. Let's run this play here, basically. I'm going to run the offense. Okay, see how it does against us. We'll be able to fit it in over to the side there, I think. Oh, let's see, it's pretty well covered. Not bad. We've got Y low to check it down to, but, you know, basically, you've got to, you know, make some sort of play like that if you want to get it. Um, and it's also, it does pretty well stopping the run. I would say it's better to stop the run if you don't have that man in the little hook zone, just so you get an extra person on the line. But, you know, it, it d does pretty pretty solid here. We're gonna show it and get over there. Oh, they're able to close up the run. Pretty well. So this basic setup, just putting your middle linebacker into a deep blue, is gonna generally get things done. I feel like where it has a problem is these developing post routes, kind of, as they start to go more over the over to that side. Then they're gonna get over those clouds. Use a more coverage base. Right deep blue. Yeah. Okay, something like this here might. See, it should X and our B could get over, open really easily over top. Oh, the pressure's getting there. We see X is almost getting in. No, he still was able to cover it. So, you know, you get pretty decent coverage even on those developing rows. I would worry maybe about level sale, something like that, might be able to get over them a bit more. Something with I need an out road over there. No, it's doing a pretty good job covering them. I could see it kind of getting over top, maybe. No, he still even played it backed up there. So we can see you're getting really good coverage from your CBs in those clouds covering behind them. So this Tampa 2, you know, does the job. But where I would go to the next level with it if, I'm, if it's not getting the job and I know they're not going to run, same thing, pinch the line, put my middle linebacker and then the deep blue, but I will put X into that hook zone and he becomes very important off the line. Him becoming that hook zone, he's gonna be huge there. Then Lee, you're gonna put into a hard flat, and then you're gonna double tap Y and put X into a deep half by hitting right on the right stick. And the last thing that I'll do is I'll put B into a spy. So I'll only have two guys rushing the quarterback. I'm like, Tim, you're gonna get pancaked. What are you doing? Well, this is where I add in the wrinkle. I will um, user this CB right here, and he's actually gonna be playing the hook up the middle of the field. I'm gonna be watching the middle of the field, looking for any developing routes that I can run over with, and cut back to the middle if he does end up throwing there. Huge responsibility for this guy, for this user. And the reason I have him blitzing is so that it tricks the game into thinking that you have three guys rushing the quarterback when really you only have two, but they won't be pancaked. Because when you have a weak box, you have a huge chance that you can be pancaked. So I'll move him right up here, make sure it's registering, and those guys aren't going to get pancaked. But I'll just play him like he's in a, a, some sort of a hook zone. I'm just going to user him over the middle. So that's my Tampa 2 setup, like this, the complicated one. Uh, but it works for me. It works, works really well, actually. Uh, when I'm looking to get those kind of like deeper routes over to the side, in the middle, I'm able to use this setup a lot, actually, to get the job done. 
can take a little bit to set up, I'd say. But not too long. I'd say five seconds setup. You've got it done there. I spied the wrong guy, but that's still the same idea. And, you know, it does... Here in practice mode, all these, we can't really control that... It, that user like we'd like to because I'm playing the offense here, but you can see he just he goes right in. But generally, he's going to just play this hook zone. I'll put him in a hook zone this time just to show it because I was able to beat that defense pretty easy. It does take, you know, a decent user in order to be able to stop it. Let's try to put our user over here. So that's going to give us a simulated user. And see if we can attack the right side of the field here with this. I don't see it's doing a good job of covering the post. B did get open over top, but I threw it a little too deep. If I throw it shorter, I should have been able to hit him. And deeper the coverage was there. So that's the one thing I'd be worried about with your user, kind of just you can take a look at this. That's where you need your user to cut across with him. See see the way that that route just, just hit? See the way he's breaking there? If that user had been following him like he should have, that would have been his responsibility. That's going to cut that route down even more. Like, there is a little room for him to throw it in this area. I don't know if he would have jumped that route down yet. So that's where you need your user to defend this spot. I definitely have some gameplay footage of it as well. In this first play, this is just my standard setup here. And we see, just watching over the side here, and we're quickly going to close in. He goes for the big jump. We shut that play down. Huge hit. He's not going to be able to get more than five on that, mostly from that crazy play. So again here, my opponent's driving back. I'm going to be able to get the pressure in there and make him just force the throw away. If, the, if they do get the sheds like they can here, then you should be able to stop him. You see here, quickly the pressure gets in off the edge, and he's going to sack him big time. So you can't get the pressure with the basic setup for sure. The advanced setup, not so much, just because the way I have it designed is just for coverage. You know, I'm taking pass rushing away from it. So even if he does fit something in, we should be able to close in quick and get a hit like that to knock the ball loose. Of course, forced fumbles aren't going to come all the time, but generally you're setting yourself up for some big hits here because everyone's backed off in the short. He tries to roll it out, but I have, I'm able to call in the spy there and we're going to knock the ball off him again. So what really does it for me though, because I'm throwing so much coverage in the advanced setup here, I'm getting a lot of picks with this uh, with this defense. See here, he thinks he can fit it in that little zone backing up. It's, you forget you don't really notice it because it's backing up from down low, from the line, from the defensive line. You don't really see it. It sneaks in there like a spy kind of can. So again here, watching over the middle of the field, pressure gets in somehow, and he has to throw one away deep. We're able to click and pick, steal that ball, get it back, and you know, this little return. Oh, not too bad, not too bad. It's hard to return for pick sixes this year, not like other years. Here we go, I'm in a playoff game. I seem to be down, I'm on defense, roll out, but boom, another deep pick on that. See, another time they're trying that post route, and my secondary is closing on those quickly. They are not getting them in. So again here, backing up, I see him usering over the middle of the field, covering those post routes. He doesn't really have much, tries to playmaker up, and that's not going to work out. We had four defenders, I think, in that area. They're not going to be able to get it through. So you can really limit what your opponent's doing. Um, I find that this plays pretty good at taking away level sail and um, halfback wheel as well. I do a generally good job taking away as long as I can cover that post route then um, the halfback route isn't a problem and whatever they're going to play maker on the, those other routes aren't a problem because that's generally the post coming over the middle and then the halfback late those are the two things you have to wor worry about on a halfback wheel and this does a good job against them so try out this defense let me know how it works for you let me know how you're liking 4-3 or 3-4 hey i love to hear about your game tell me about how madden's going for you i've been time bomb thanks for checking out this video i'll catch you guys